Show me what you got. got, got, got. <laughs> How's it going, guys and geeks? Welcome back to the Geek Week Show. We just came back from the BBC America Doctor Who panel with Peter Capaldi. And it was awesome. Legendary. Uh, so we got, like, sent right to the front. And we didn't we didn't expect that. These babies. These press these passes babies. really went far for us. The, the guy actually said no to us at the gate. Uh, like, because we, we had... We had to go on the normal way. We, did, we weren't invited as press. Because we... Yeah, we weren't invited specifically because we were press, but because we did have these passes, he's just like, no, 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 press go in through the other side. So we thought we weren't going to get a seat because we thought yeah. we had to be invited. But no, we got right at the front, and we got footage of a lot of the panel. Yeah, which is awesome. I, I, I filmed up until the part where the audience questions came in, and then I filmed the last question as well as his departure. So stay tuned for that in full 4K glory. Yay! It's so exciting, but it's so emotional at the same time. Because yeah, no, there were a couple of parts where I got a little teary-eyed, I'm going to be honest. When the standing ovation occurred at the end, I, I teared up. Yeah, because we were there when he got announced as the doctor, and we went yeah. to that panel. So I was like, ooh, a new doctor, like, what's this all about? And, you know, it, it, it's just been a really And we cool were there for the, the one last year with yeah. Pearl Mackey, and we've seen Peter Capaldi rise and fall. Not fall. Rise and go to bed. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's really awesome. Um, he he really is just a fantastic person and a really creative thinker and a really intelligent person. So yeah. I can't wait to see what he's going to do next. He says that he's going to be doing a movie next, actually, yeah. and he's looking forward to spending more time with his family. That's really exciting for him. Yeah, for obvious reasons. Um, he he does elaborate on the fact that Doctor Who is such an exhausting experience, mm -hmm. in and out, day day and night. He has been fil he films like ten months straight yeah. for a season, which just sounds exhausting. And you're at the center of this this worldwide phenomenon, and you have to show up for press events like this one, and all. And I I'm so happy for him that he's able to finally relax and just take a moment to just reevaluate where he is and and I'm what he wants to do. Yeah. He wants to do yeah. Good for him. Yeah. So I'm I'm really happy that we had that experience today because that was awesome. I'm really Great happy, start to the day. I'm really happy that his final season was, in my opinion, the best. Yeah. I think he really, really hit his stride. And while it's hard to see someone go when they're finally hitting their stride, I mean, he, he was great from the beginning, but the actual episodes and his storylines are finally, like, up to the par that we are expecting as Doctor Who fans. It's hard to see him go, but we're, we're looking forward to seeing what happens with the future of the Doctor Who. But we love to watch him walk away. I love to watch him regenerate. We, there was a good discussion about his hair. That was wonderful, how it keeps growing and growing and growing. Um, yeah, originally they wanted to cut it, uh, and they did cut it for the first season. And the next season he was just like, no, let's let's let it do its thing. Let's let it just run wild. Which run is why rapid. his hair is like this now. He, a little message to BBC, he needs to be paid for the Christmas special. You guys haven't paid him yet? Well, What's no, no, that about? he's paid for the Christmas special. He's not paid for the day that he came in to regenerate. They said that they don't pay him for that. What's up with that? Apparently that's not a thing. They don't pay actors when they regenerate. Yeah, so there you go. So there you th it. Think of those iconic moments, some of the most iconic in Doctor Who history. They don't get paid for it. <laughs> Maybe David Tennant didn't want to go because he was still waiting for his paycheck. <laughs> it's like, but... I don't want to go until you pay me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, check out this panel. Let me know your thoughts. Good to see you. Well, I can't. <laughs> oh, there you are. I, I should also put out there is a whole balcony of people up here as well. Hello, balcony. <laughs> Cheaper seats. Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Um, I was mentioning this backstage, but I had the pleasure of interviewing you in London when you were filming the, uh, fir your first season as Doctor Who. And in some ways, <laughs> Because of various things I won't go into, uh, that seems like a hundred years ago. 
but in other ways, it just seems like three minutes ago. And I was wondering, I mean, if, if Doctor Who teaches us anything, uh, it's the time is a strange thing. Does it, see, how, how, does it seem like three minutes ago for you that you began this? Yeah, I don't know where the time went. Time ran away with me, you know, literally. It, uh, it just seems like a moment ago that uh, we started, but it's so intense and it fills up your life uh, uh, that you don't have a second that's not about Doctor Who, which is a nice way <laughs> to live, but it, uh, it does take over, yeah. And um, maybe we could take you back to, I mean, obviously you were a lifelong fan of Doctor Who. Um, what was your first day like on set? Uh, well, I had two first days. I had the first day, uh, which was the regeneration, uh, which was with Matt, um, who was absolutely lovely. Uh, and, I, and I couldn't, wished, couldn't have wished for a, a kinder or more welcoming entrance into the, into the world of Doctor Who. Matt really sort of looked after me on, the, on that day, uh, which was so kind of him. Uh, but then I didn't do anything for like four months. <laughs> Uh, I was Doctor Who, but we, we weren't. Do they pay you during that period, or, or they don't even pay you for the? They didn't pay me for the regeneration <laughs> day. This is true. They said we don't do that. <laughs> I've never been paid for that day's work. As a, <laughs> that's absolutely true. As a British person familiar with with what we call Auntie, which is the BBC, I, I entirely believe that. It's absolutely true. <laughs> so. Uh, so it was months and months and months and months of, not, of, of being Doctor Who, but not being Doctor Who, and just wanted to get on with it. And then finally, uh, you began. Uh, and it was uh, in deep breath, and it was my first scene in deep breath, and it was coming out of the TARDIS on, on, the, uh, by the, on, on the Thames Embankment, which had been recreated beautifully uh, on this, the sound stage at Cardiff. Uh, and I was just really, really nervous. And, uh, and I had to get into the TARDIS for the first time and come out of it, as if it was mine. Uh, uh, I remember stepping into it and looking over and seeing uh, Stephen um, Moffat looking at me. He was nervous too. He was sitting at a monitor, but he gave me a little wave. I gave him a little wave. Then I got into the, the, the TARDIS. It was me and Jenna and a bloke with a smoke machine. <laughs> <laughs> and I got me a cigarette. <laughs> and he was a, a, a props guy, and uh, we just got on there. And what was your did you? Have, what was your approach to playing the Doctor before you started, and, 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 and did you feel that? I mean, did that approach change as, as you continued? Um, no, I just sort of thought uh, that the thing to do here is to try and try and uh, bring it to myself. Uh, I did not have a lot of uh, stuff going on between who I am and, and, and who the Doctor is, uh, and uh, just to tell the stories. Uh, so really, I was guided by the script uh, and trying to uh, do the script in, in, in a way that was effective. I can remember uh, talking to you um, and when you were shooting the first season, and I said, were there any monsters that you wanted to, vintage monsters that you wanted to bring back? And you said, uh, you'd like to see the Mondasi and Cybermen. And then I interviewed Stephen Moffat, who, uh, who was a much gruffer Scott than you, even more gentle than you, rather. And, uh, and he said that was a stupid idea and that was never going to happen and they just looked like people with pullovers over their faces. Now, was he just winding me up or did he have a change of heart with, with regards to that? I think that just shows you how generous he is. <laughs> he probably does hate the frustration of my dad's inside of that, but because I liked them, I think he, he, he tried to make them work for himself. I think he did, did so very successfully. And, uh, it was interesting because, like several doctors, your, your doctor was a little um, confused in the first couple of, of episodes, the, the Ben Weekly directed episodes. But I was not, was there a moment for you when you felt that you kind of got the handle on, on the role? Uh, no, I still don't feel like I, think, uh, I got a handle on it because it, it changes all the time. I and mean, I think the, 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 the episode where I thought I felt it sort of come together. Uh, most clearly was, was listen, because uh, the Doctor was more, uh, had, had more of a, uh, an internal dialogue that we saw, he was more obsessive, and he was more, he, he was madder. You know, I always thought that it, it, it was good that he, he, would, he would find an idea, and really run with that idea, and nothing would get in his way in, in the pursuit 
of this idea, and that really all first happened with uh, listening. So uh, that sort of uh, where it began to expand more into my I don't, I don't really know how they do this, whether or not they have a pile of scripts lying around that they intend for a doctor, whoever that might be, uh, and you just pick it up and get on with it. They might change it a little bit to suit you. Um, uh, uh, so I think you sort of enter it without them really knowing what you're going to do with it. You know, you don't really do anything with it, you just sort of try and be it. So they don't really know what that is until they see you do it. And then you, you mentioned Jenna Coleman, by the time you joined the show, uh, I mean, even though she's much younger than, oh, yeah, a couple of years younger than you, let's say. Um, <laughs> She was the old hand on the show, and you were kind of the, the newbie. What, what was that relationship like? Yeah, she was great. I mean, Jenna was the first person that showed me around the TARDIS and sort of showed me around the studio and said, this is where the canteen is, <laughs> and this is where your trailer is. And uh, she was really, really welcoming, and really sweet, uh, and, uh, and, and made my life a lot easier. And great fun as well. Also, it must be really difficult, you know, if you're a... Uh, you, you know, the cast just changes, the doctor just changes, and, 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 and she'd been used to Matt, and had developed a whole relationship uh, with Matt, and suddenly that was over. There was this other slightly older gentleman <laughs> in that role, and uh, yeah, I think she got really beautifully. And you, uh, I think some of the most beloved episodes were directed by Rachel. Rachel, yeah. and now I'm wondering but to die, I'm to die. I, I mean, she's, I mean, I've spoken to her, she's an absolute delight. She's fantastic. Um, and what was that working relationship like? Um, well, Rachel, I just think, is a, is a brilliant director. We live in a, in a, in a, in a world where, uh, when I started in the business, uh, directors were uh, the most powerful person on the set, uh, and they were uh, generally very creative and artistic uh, people. Uh, as the business has changed slightly, they've become more uh, like plumbers. <laughs> and just, the writer says there's the script, it goes in there, and so it's come out there at the other end, so that you can just fix all those pipes and make sure it comes out. Um, and Rachel's not like that, Rachel's the real thing, she's an artist. So uh, she understands drama, and she understands art, she's a fantastic eye, and she won't. Um, she, she, she shoots very cinematically. She won't just shoot a scene with uh, coverage, which is what a lot of directors do. They just do a white shot, a couple of close-ups, and sort of that's it. She comes to everything uh, with an idea, with a visual idea, which is an expression of the drama of the scene. Uh, and that's being a director. That's the real thing. Uh, and uh, I adore her. I think she's fine. So I was very, very lucky that she came into uh, my last Episode because it's an upheaval for her. She doesn't live in the UK. She has to leave her family and come work in Cardiff for months. And uh, she did a brilliant job. Um, and then you know, uh, Jenna leaves the show, and now you have Pearl and, and Matt. And suddenly you're the person showing them around the canteen, uh, showing them where, where the canteen was. How was that dynamic different from from working with Jenna? Yeah, well, that's uh, very different. I think uh, uh, Pearl's brilliant because again, she has to come into a juggernaut of a show which is already up and moving. Uh, and uh, she hadn't done that much uh, television before, so it was, uh, I think, quite difficult for her to, to come to terms with the, uh, the scale of it, which is always a problem for all of us. But it's great, you know, it really works and it's fun and it's, um, you know, the thing about Doctor Who is it's, uh, it, you know, that last season we did was really like 10 months every day. Uh, and in the nicest possible way, it's like being in a television factory. It's like being in a magic factory. It's like Charlie the Chocolate Factory. It's like that. But you still got to work, got to work every day. Are you, are you saying Stephen Roberts and Uma Lumpur? I'm just saying that. I, you saw that. Oh, right, I can never now interview Stephen Roberts ever again. That's, yeah. that's it. Yeah. No, it just means you go to work and you sort of you, you, you produce magic, but you've still got to work at it. Uh, so we just sort of get on doing that. So it's, it's, it has its precious, but I think it got some of it. Uh, and you do, as you referenced before, have one more episode, the, the special Christmas episode. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, try to get you to spoil anything, but maybe you could just set, you know, tease the episode a little for us. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, uh, my doctor is, uh, is, is refusing to regenerate. Uh, he's just not having it. <laughs> he's fed up with it. Uh, uh, he doesn't want to turn into somebody else. Whether or not that be a real, um, someone as talented as Joey Whittaker. He's not ready to do that. <laughs> um, so he has to be uh, uh, persuaded to do it. And the person that, that becomes involved in that persuasion is uh, the first doctor, uh, William Hartnell, who, who, who is a hero. He's played rather brilliantly by David Bradley. <laughs> he, he, he was an uncanny, it's not an impression, it's a sort of, he, he somehow manages to, to evoke uh, the spirit of, of William Hart. Uh, and I sometimes just look at him on the set because I, you know, my first doctor was William Hart, was the first doctor. Uh, and I remember as a child uh, seeing him and finding him strange and weird and, and grumpy and magical. And just, I just loved him. It. it was just extraordinary. Uh, uh, and so suddenly I look at David and and there he'd be. And in fact, I remember when I, I, I first met David when uh, Mark Gatiss had done Adventure in Space and Time, which is when David played William Hartnell. Uh, and Mark invited him down to the set to meet. This was before I was uh, Doctor Who. Uh, he invited me down to the as a fan and to see that there was no TARDIS there and everything. Uh, I, and I got to meet David, got my photo taken. I remember emailing uh, Mark and saying, uh, thanks very much for letting uh, uh, a young man meet Doctor Who. Which is what it was, was that, that it was like me meeting Doctor Who, so it was very exciting. So it was great to work with him on the on set. And why did you decide that it was, it was time for you to, to depart the show? To, uh, uh, you asked me when I felt uh, I, uh, 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 my doctor sort of worked or I sort of was, was on top of it or knew how to do it. Uh, and I never really ever wanted to get to that position. I never wanted to get to a place where I knew how to do this because that's not what being creative is. You know, you, you should be constantly challenged and constantly um, working. Uh, to, to, to not knowing how to do what it is you're trying to do. Uh, and the actual amount of time we were spending on the show, uh, uh, I realized that I was getting the hang of it. And that uh, I would get, probably get a bit tired. Uh, I don't mean I'd reached this stage, but I was frightened that I would get tired and just begin to say, I've got the hang of it, this is how you do it. Uh, and that's not a place that I, I want to be. So that's why I said it. Uh, and again, I'm, not, I'm really not digging for uh, any spoilers, but what was your, I asked you what your first day on set was like, what, what was your last day on set like? Um, I, it was, uh, 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 it was fun. <laughs> it, it was quite fun because uh, it was sort of quite kind of, I don't want to give it away, but it was quite like, uh, iconic, I guess, and uh, uh, you, you're doing something that uh, all the doctors have to go through at some point. Uh, and it was uh, sad. And it was also quite kind of, the way we did it, we had all of the, the, the special people that I'd worked with were all there. So we all sort of said goodbye at the same time. But you never sort of really say goodbye. Because, uh, I mean, I, mean I, I, I just haven't finished it yet. I've got to go into the studio and do some uh, voice recording and some lines that have been changed and a bit of plot that have been altered a little bit. So I haven't completed uh, uh, the role yet. But it was, yeah, it was, it was fun uh, and, and then it was sad too. Uh, and then you mentioned Jodie Whittaker uh, before, who's, who's going to be, uh, I never really like the word replacing uh, an actor, but, but is going to be playing uh, the Doctor. How did you discover that, that she had a role? Uh, 
Voilà. It was kept very secret. I mean, I didn't know anything about it. But uh, I had a sort of vague, I sort of thought uh, it might be uh, not a man, which is what was quite nice. Uh, but I wasn't sure. And then I went into uh, uh, Paul Smith's, which is a very wonderful clothes shop in London, where I buy my suits. <laughs> And everybody knows me in there. And they said, we just got a call, they said, from, from, from Doctor Who, the Doctor Who office, saying, can we have a pair of your trousers? <laughs> <laughs> but with a waist size 30. <laughs> and I thought, I don't, I'm finished. I don't need any more trousers. Because Doctor Who wears Paul Smith trousers for the fashionistas. I'm not <laughs> So they were obviously looking for a pair of trousers for uh, the new Doctor Who to wear. And I thought, well, that can't really be a man. <laughs> With a 30-inch waist. Uh, uh, and so I thought, oh, that must be an alien. Uh, and uh, I know they just called me uh, uh, a couple of days later, uh, before it was announced and stuff like that. And ironically, and I, and I called Joe, who was amazing. But it was lovely to talk to him. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, she just lives up the road from me. <laughs> and I haven't actually, I haven't met her, so I didn't really know her, uh, but she said we've sat in the same cafes and coffee bars <laughs> over the last three months. <laughs> and she said I haven't been able to come and say hello to you. Because that would have to be, the reason I would come to say hello to you would be to say, uh, I'm, I'm the new doctor here, but uh, <laughs> She's amazing, and uh, 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 I saw what she's done, it's great. So I think yeah, it's, it's in really good hands. Um, and I can remember the day that it was announced. I mean, there had been pe you know, people quite reasonably agitating uh, for a big change in the, the person who played the Doctor. And my, I guess my concern was that they would go kind of down if they did, down if they, if they didn't, or it would be perceived as, as something they should have done a while ago. And then the news broke, and you were just looking uh, on the internet at these like, young girls just crying with joy at the announcement. And I mean, I was saying earlier that, that I tend to tear up about anything to do with Doctor Who, but I remember standing at a, on a street corner in South Union Square watching like I think a seven-year-old girl watching the uh, you know the sort of the trailer reveal and she's crying and now I'm crying like an idiot. <laughs> oh, or not like an idiot but you're certainly crying on, uh, on this corner on Union Square and were you sort of aware of this kind of you know outpouring of joy really at the, at the announcement? Well that I was crying. Right. <laughs> but we knew no, that was a pretty great deal of attention. <laughs> I thought it was great. I think it's wonderful. I think it's, uh, the thing is, you know, if the thing is, the doctor is, is so big that you can't keep track of it all. So you can't, I don't kind of hang around the internet looking for things right. related to Doctor Who because you will you're not me. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, you can stumble upon things which are a bit unpleasant. Uh, so uh, uh, you know, I'm, I, 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 I hope people are just uh, embracing her. I think she'll be absolutely wonderful, and I think it's a great idea. So I'm glad people were moved by the idea of her. And I'm going to throw it out to the audience in a second, but one last question. Are you, uh, are you going to steal anything, or have you stolen anything, I guess, now from the, from the set? Is there like a, a, a blue box hole, you know, is there like a space where the, the dialogue was? No, there's nothing. You don't. I played Doctor Who. You don't need anything. Uh, okay, we're going to throw it out to the uh, audience. Thank you so much um, for lining up here. And we'll start uh, over here. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Jeremy. And, and what's your question? Uh, well, first, Peter, I want to say thank you so much for coming to New York and joining us this weekend. <laughs> so, uh, I know this is a, not 
Doctor Who uh, retrospective kind of spotlight panel, but um, you uh, had a little character in the show called The Thick of It. And, uh, I'm quite a fan of, and I was wondering if, uh, now that sadly your time as the Doctor is over, you may be talking to Armando about returning to that universe, possibly? Uh, well, I will be uh, working with Armando next year. Yeah, we can yeah. do a uh, uh, film next year. And he's just done a wonderful film called The Death Stand, uh, which you must all go and see. He's absolutely brilliant and hysterical and very dark and very clever. Uh, and I'm very lucky uh, to, to, to work with someone like him. So I'm very thrilled to come back doing something with him. But uh, I won't tell you what it is you want to describe. Thank you. Uh, yes, over here, your, your name and your question. Hi. Uh, hi. Hi, Peter. My name is Taro. And Taro. My question is... Taro? As Taro. in Taro Cart? Yeah, but without the T. What's your second name? It's not Cart, is it? It's O'Halloran. <laughs> it's what? O'Halloran. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> um, so my question is, so you've had a lot of costumes over your tenure as the Doctor. Yeah. And one piece of costume has remained constant over the past three series. The iconic Paul Smith jumper. As you mentioned earlier, the Doctor loves Paul Smith. So I know that you had that prior to wearing it in the show. Yeah. So how did you manage to persuade the production team to let you wear it? Uh, well, well, I didn't have it. What happened was we were looking for Doctor for the Doctor Who costume, which is a, a nightmare. You know, I mean, it just goes on for for years, <laughs> and there are so many committees and so many people who have to please and blah blah. blah, blah, blah. Uh, and you sort of know what you want when you start, but you've got to go through all the jump through all these hoops. Uh, to please everybody, and I'd been th jumping through some of those hoops, and I'd gone to the shop, and I'd seen this sporty jump, and I thought, that's Doctor Who's jumper, there's no doubt about that, that's Doctor Who's jumper, so I bought it, uh, and I wore it to my read-through, the first <laughs> I saw that in the read-through, <laughs> hoping people would, and I kept saying, this is Doctor Who's jumper, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, finally they agreed that it would be Doctor Who's jumper, but, and, they, and they, they had to go to the shop and buy a whole pile of them. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. I mean, people were very uh, up for it. They liked it. It's it, it's good. So uh, yeah, what are okay? What are the chances of it being seen in your last episode? Oh, that's you don't want me to give away stuff like that, do you? <laughs> like, it's like, what jumper is he wearing? People are telling me, I wonder what jumper he's wearing. <laughs> do you think it's a spotty one? <laughs> I'm not telling you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I'm afraid we're, we're, we're coming close to the end now, but before um, I probably say goodbye to, to Peter, uh, we're going to play a little video, which I think is going to sum up uh, what a lot of us feel uh, uh, about Mr. Capaldi. Thank you all. You are so amazing. You're so kind. You're so good-hearted. You're the future. And uh, Jodie Whittaker is so lucky. And so are you. And this, the uh, enthusiasm and kindness and generosity is the best thing about the human race. And that's what you are. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Peter Capaldi. <laughs> Yeah.
exit here today. You're going to be exiting out the left to the right side of the theater. I'm still, I'm still like in a state of shock. It was that was just such that a was happy beautiful. surprise to be like. And right that was there. the last Peter Capaldi panel in New York Comic Con anyway of him while he's still in the yeah. role as the Doctor. So. so that's that's huge. We really hope you guys like that uh, the panel. Uh, again, please let us know your thoughts if you have any. Um, and yeah, it, it was such a good time. We hope you enjoyed it as well. Sorry about the shaky footage in the beginning. I was trying to figure out. Where to put the camera. Where to put the camera. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot going on. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.